In this video, I'm gonna share with you both why you need a gimbal and why you shouldn't use one. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Jesse Delgado. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I believe that in today's day and age, video is the most effective vehicle and marketing is the best bridge to grow your audience and income. Today, we're gonna to be talking about gimbals. You might've seen somebody rolling around with one of these things or the two-handed versions of them. They're becoming more and more popular over the years. You know, I remember when I first seen one, it was on an advertisement. I had never seen one. I was so blown away by the technology. I remember it was a guy that was holding one with two handles and he was going up and down like this and the camera was staying completely still. And I remember thinking, wow, like the potential, the, the amount of things that you can do with a tool like that. And it was at that moment that I knew I had to have one. All right, so maybe you have one and you're thinking about ways that you can maximize your use or you're looking into getting one and you're wondering, should you get one? Is it a worthy investment? And I'm not gonna make you wait to the end of the video to tell you that yes, it's absolutely a worthy investment and it's something that is incredibly valuable in your tool belt. To be able to have stabilized shots shots that on command you can stabilize from point a to point b is an incredibly valuable tool now what i've been noticing over the years as they became more popular and more cheap is you start getting people that are trying to replicate other people they see it they want to have it and for the very same reasons that i got enticed by it people now are just discovering them and they're getting enticed by it. But what's happening is, is that it's leading to the same kind of repetitive shots over and over. And people are relying more on the tool than their creativity. And that's where I believe that you're going wrong. You should not purchase a gimbal thinking that it's gonna automatically make your filmmaking better. Because really what's gonna happen is it's going to enhance your filmmaking. Whatever type of film IQ that you already currently have, the tool, the gimbal, is only going to draw that out and make that more apparent. And that's why you see so many people that own gimbals and their music videos or their shots, they look the same. Even though the camera is moving and it's steady and it looks smooth and it looks nice, it's still, their, their film still is boring. Their end product still lacks luster. And the reason why is because it's not your tool that is gonna take you to the next level. It's gonna be your film IQ. It's gonna be things like storytelling, like blocking shots, proper lighting, and a whole bunch of other things, casting. So let me tell you number one reason why I think you should not get a gimbal. You should not get a gimbal if you think that it's gonna make your filmmaking better. And the reason why I say you should not get it is one, of course, it's not gonna make your filmmaking better. But number two, it's gonna set you up with a false expectation. You're gonna think that by just placing your camera on this gimbal and flying it through the air, that somehow you're gonna magically just become a better filmmaker. That's not the case. And matter of fact, you can learn some of the filmmaking skills that will help take you to the next level before you even make that purchase. So that's the number one reason why I think you should not get a gimbal. The second reason why I think you should not get a gimbal. If you're trying to emulate somebody else's style. Now, one of the most influential and popular filmmakers, especially with the gimbal, is a man named Brandon Lee. And I remember seeing how he used the gimbal and I thought to myself, man, I gotta start using the gimbal like he uses it to try to replicate the same kind of shots and the same filmmaking techniques that he was using. The problem with that is it was not causing me to grow as a filmmaker, it was causing me to just copy and try to replicate, but not fully understand why he's doing those techniques or what is actually involved in moving those techniques or how he moves those techniques along in the edit how he combines it with the overall picture to tell his story. See, sometimes we think as filmmakers, man, if I could just model this particular method or this style that this person is using, then somehow I can produce a similar product. And that's not the case at all. Actually, it's quite opposite. You end up producing a result that once again is lackluster. So that would be the second reason why I would not purchase a gimbal. All right, the third reason why I would not purchase a gimbal is if you already own a gimbal and you're not even really using it. And I say that because this is me. Matter of fact, I own two gimbals. I bought the Kame TV single way back in the day. 
and that one actually is still pretty cool the the problem with that one is is that the motor is mounted on the on the other side so I can't flip out the screen because it gets in the way and that's why I stopped using it and purchased this one I purposely haven't purchased or upgraded the version 2 and I haven't purchased the Ronin because I just don't need it for right now I wouldn't say that I barely use this but I it's enough to use it for what I need it for so there's no reason for me to just go and get another gimbal oh man actually I own three gimbals I also own a, a two-handle gimbal as well another came TV came TV Argo um, I forgot about that see now sometimes I can fly heavier lenses on the two-handed one and that's the reason why I still keep that because it does come in handy for bigger production shoots but you don't need to purchase another gimbal if you already own a gimbal and you're not really using it all the time okay so those are three reasons why I think that you should not purchase a gimbal okay let's get into some reasons why I think you should purchase a gimbal now of course the obvious right it makes the camera incredibly smooth you can get some beautiful tracking shots you can get some dolly shots. You can do so many camera techniques with a gimbal. You can emulate a jib shot. And it's really incredible to have. You know, there's been times where I've been in a pinch and I've used the gimbal to record an interview. And I'll sit there and I'll hold it incredibly still. And you know what? There's no camera shakes. It looks like it's on a tripod. So if you're looking to get some more dynamic shots and it would actually add to your storytelling in other words you already have the knowledge of why you need to move the camera a specific way and why you want to track that shot or why you want to dolly that shot or why you want to emulate a jib shot or whatever type of shot that it is that you're trying to achieve with the gimbal if you already have the knowledge beforehand then yes i think you absolutely 100 percent need one in your repertoire they're amazing tools. They come in super handy, especially in run and gun situations. It's incredibly light and compact. This thing breaks down. I could even take it off the stand and it comes even smaller. You can break off the handle and it'll, it'll break down even smaller than that. So it's super easy for, for traveling. Uh, the batteries last an incredibly long time. So as you can see, it's incredibly compact. It's incredibly lightweight. I can fly this thing all day and not really even feel it. So I think that there's some tremendous value to having a gimbal in your tool belt. Uh, some of the shots obviously are really, really beautiful shots. They add to storytelling and it's a, it's a wonderful tool and it's amazing how technology has advanced in this way to be able to give us these tools to tell better stories. But at the end of the day, that's really what it is. It's about telling stories. It's about having in mind and asking yourself those questions. Why are you moving the camera that way? Why do you want to do a dolly shot, a tracking shot? Why are you doing that? Instead of just going like, man, I got a camera. It'll look dope on the, on the gimbal. Let me just throw the camera on the gimbal and just go have at it. Man, I see so many people doing that, especially with music videos. They just slap it on there and they just shoot the whole music video, but it comes out looking really, really boring because you can only go so many places with a gimbal. Left, right, front, back, move around, follow somebody. I mean, there's there's only so many shots that you can get with a gimbal to where, you know, I mean, it's gonna look repetitive if you do it over and over. Now, a couple of tips that I'll give you for using a gimbal. You really wanna make sure that even though this is a one-handed stabilizer, that you're stabilizing it as much as possible with a second hand. That's why I have this little clamp on here. One is for you know resting it putting it down but it also acts as a second grip for me to hold while i'm getting a tracking shot making it much more stable just because it's a gimbal doesn't mean you're not going to get any type of shake sometimes you do get little micro jitters or so it helps to have secondary support it helps if you learn a you know technique to being able to to fly it you know technique like holding your arms close into your into your waist into your stomach and and walking a certain way so that that way you're eliminating as much of the shake as possible another tip that i would recommend is i love using the gimbal for parallax shots you know that's where you fly the gimbal in front of something in the foreground that really just accents and shows the type of movement because if you put a wide angle lens on the gimbal and you start flying it from left to right and there's nothing in the foreground you're not going to be able to tell that it's actually moving but if you put something in the foreground then that movement will go really really quick and it'll have this parallaxing effect that'll show you that the camera's actually moving in space another technique that i like to do is i like to go around poles 
or I like to do reveal shots around trees, uh, walls, and kind of just come in. Sometimes I'll even do a shot where uh, talent is, is performing and I'll just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the reason why I do that is then I'll bring it into the edit and then in certain spots, wherever I need it to be, like specifically a music video, I'll be able to cut in and out right on those spots. Another uh, technique that I'll do is go, I'll do, this is mostly in music videos, I'll go forward and back, forward and back. Then in post, when I'm editing it, if I need a shot that kind of moves in like a dolly, boom, I'll have it right there. I'll have plenty of them all throughout the song. So those are a few techniques that help maximize the gimbal, help you make the most out of it. Man, I would like to know your thoughts. I know there are some creative ways that people use these and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the first person to come up with most, the most creative ways. I kind of use it more as a tool to tell my story than I do as, you know, just creating different stuff with it. I probably should experiment more with it and create some different types of ways of, of moving it, but I would love to hear your input. What are some ways that you use the gimbal? What are some, some methods that you use to either balance it or fly it? Or what kind of shots do you like getting with the gimbal? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. I'm working on some marketing and some sales material right now to be able to help filmmakers make an income off of their talents. God gave you a gift in filmmaking and I believe that you can use that gift to be able to provide a lifestyle for yourself and until next time baby girl we got a hot one put this on while you put